Hey guys, Techie here from Techie Farm Boy, and today I'm going to be baking Turon de Doña Pepa, which is a Peruvian dessert hailing from the country of Peru, and is famously baked by Peruvians during a Peruvian holiday. <laughs> I just want to say that before we get started, thank you all very much for 250 subscribers. It means the world to me, and I hope that I can keep on entertaining all 250 of you in the future. Now let's get on to the ingredients and origins. If you want to skip to a specific time, like origins, which I'm about to cover, or ingredients, or just the recipe here, 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 and the timestamps down below as well. Let's go ahead and get into it. Turon de Doña Pepa was first baked in Lima, Peru to celebrate Mesmerado, or the Purple Month, named appropriately for the nuns in Lima that wear purple, among many other purple things. Purple Month lands in the month of October and was started from a religious miracle in 1655 that entailed an image of Jesus Christ graffitied on a church wall being the only thing to survive a giant earthquake. This caused a belief that the wall was not only protected from earthquakes, but also a holy symbol and could cure earthly illnesses. Many Peruvians made a trek to Lima to see the wall and pray for healing, including one baker named Josefa Marmanillo, otherwise known as Doña Pepa. Hence the dessert's name, Tron de Doña Pepa. Doña Pepa was paralyzed in both her arms and legs and made the journey to the wall in hopes of being cured. After praying to Jesus, she soon was miraculously healed and was able to walk again. A few days later, she allegedly was told a recipe for Turon de Doña Pepa by an angel in her dreams. She went back to Lima and handed out the treats to everyone there, and it became a tradition of hers to go back every year with her signature Turon de Doña Pepas in hand. Now for your ingredients. You'll need 2 tablespoons of anise seed, another tablespoon of anise seed, 1 half of a cup of water, 4 cups of flour, 1 half of a tablespoon of salt, 1 pound of shortening, 5 eggs, and 3 tablespoons of toasted and ground sesame seeds. You'll also need a lot of honey for later, but there's a secret alternative type of sauce that fits better for this. I just don't have the ability to make it at this time because I don't know the location of two very specific fig leaves nearby. You can find how to make that in the description as well. Guess what time it is? It's 11.08 p.m., but good guess, it's time to start baking. Add one tablespoon of anise seed to a half cup of water and bring that to a boil for a whole minute. Afterwards, just set it aside. Put the flour, salt, and shortening into a blender or food processor and mix it till it looks like some of the good old-fashioned Quaker's oatmeal. Slowly add the five yolks and the boiled seed water to the mix until you get dough. Knead it until it isn't sticky, which might take a while from my experience. Take the dough and put it on a floured surface like a pan with parchment paper and flour on it, and knead that dough a little bit more and sprinkle the sesame seeds in while doing so. After that, wrap the dough in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for about an hour. While that's happening, take a break. Then preheat your oven to 350 degrees. After the hours pass, divide the dough into 8.5 by 8.5 inch square pieces that are a half inch thick, which I did not follow. Arrange the pieces onto a greased baking sheet and bake it for about 15 minutes or until the dough's dried out. Take them out of the oven and let them cool for a while on a cooling rack, but make sure not to take the squares off the pan to transfer them to a rack or they might break. Once they're cool enough, put a layer of the squares on a pan lined with wax paper and try to fill the spaces between broken bars, if any. Cover the layer with honey and put another layer on, making sure to keep it not cracked, unlike me. And keep doing this until you either run out of layers to use or it's gotten too tall. Cover the final layer with honey again and sprinkle loads of sprinkles or other small treats on top and let it sit. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I certainly did. And if you did actually enjoy it, uh, sincerely, don't forget to like or comment or subscribe or maybe all three. Uh, it, it would really make my day. Uh, thank you guys for watching and 
I hope you all have a great day.